Okay, so uh, one of the reasons for not one of the reasons, the reason for not including this term in trying to compute delta yeah, is of course it would have made the mathematics messier mm -hmm. but uh, the most important thing is that if I had included this term in trying to compute delta, my delta would potentially depend on capital T because this term depends on capital T. So, if I try to compute delta using this term, it would delta would almost certainly depend on capital T ok and that is uh, just not allowed ok because remember first came delta ok there is no T here when we started talking about delta ok. So, we cannot have dependence on T ok. So, that is uh, sort of critical to remember that is why we uh, got rid of this term just by um, yeah I mean just by saying that you are always going to go become smaller in some sense hmm. ok great. So, now we have been able to choose a delta the important thing to remember is that there are a few elements here. So, delta does depend on T0 and R because of V's dependence on T0 and of course, R is on the right hand side. Now, you can almost never get rid of the dependence on R, but as you can imagine for uniform uh, convergence or uniform attractivity, you will need this dependence to go away. Hmm? For uniform results, you will need this guy to go away. That is pretty much the key aspect here. Excellent. Now that we have chosen a delta and we figured out that it depends on T0 and R, but independent of whatever independent of epsilon independent of t which it has to be. Uh, now, we go on to find our uh, capital T. So, we just then we use this small idea ok. What was the idea? We, um, we already know that this is upper bounded by gamma r. The term inside this is upper bounded by gamma of r ok just because of this guy ok that is what we will use ok. So, uh, once you have chosen a delta you have V T 0 X 0 which is on the left hand side here is smaller than phi epsilon 1 plus gamma of R goes out and the integral is just capital T right integral is just capital T. So, what do I have? I just have V T 0 X 0 is less than phi epsilon 1 plus capital T times gamma R. And we, of course, we always al already stated by choice of delta norm of x is less than r whenever norm x is less than delta ok. I hope that is clear to you yeah uh, from here ok all right great. So, once I have this kind of an expression it is pretty straightforward I need if you just compute t from here you just get this expression t has to be greater than this guy ok and it is it is very natural for you to get a uh, get a expression with t greater than right because any t larger than that is allowed your conditions are not violated for any time greater than this capital T. So, anything beyond this time is ok ok and you can see this time depends on <coughs> epsilon right initial time state whatever so on and so forth yeah, it depends on a lot of things ok. Now, uh, if you want to see dependence on delta directly you can of course use the fact that this is greater than phi norm x 0 squared sorry phi of norm x 0 not norm x 0 squared. So, this is greater than phi of norm x 0 right just by positive definiteness. So, that will also bring in some kind of delta dependence as you can see yeah because phi of norm x 0. So, norm x 0 is less than delta you will not get an exact result inequality like that, but you can see that there is a dependence on delta also just by virtue of this guy yeah? just by virtue of this guy because the way we have chosen delta is exactly this yeah. yeah. So, there will be some kind of connection with delta here all right ok. 
great uh, anyway so there's epsilon and r all right uh, so like i said in order to prove i mean the the second exercise of course to prove uniform asymptotic stability yeah so for that the first exercise is anyway useful because you proved uniform stability to prove uniform attract uh, sorry asymptotic stability you have to prove uniform attractivity so like i said this dependence on t0 has to go okay the delta dependence on t0 has to go so therefore you have to think how you get rid of this dependence okay In what is the additional assumption that you use here all right so that's the idea okay good so these are the only two theorems that we prove okay but you can see that the other ones will also be very very closely connected to this yeah if i wanted to as you can imagine if i wanted to go to the global version i don't need um you know i don't have any ball of radius r okay so for all the global versions of the result the ball of radius r business goes away okay so for all the uniformity the you know t0 dependence goes away exponential stability is the only thing that i have not uh, actually even approached okay um that will require a little bit more uh, not this kind of analysis that requires more uh, because you have to like i said you have to use the same order of magnitude ideas and so on and so forth yeah so that i'm not uh, going into yeah you can check out the proof in textbooks like uh, you know khalil and vidya sagar and so on okay you will have some proof there okay if you are interested all right great um if there is nothing no questions here then i will move on to our next uh, set of lectures which are on lasalle invariance yeah so anyway this is again notes scribed by some students in the past um so what we want to do is we want to discuss the lasalle's invariance principle today hmm? uh now what is the motivation uh i will simply state it so motivation uh for several asymptotically stable systems uh v is c1 v positive definite but v dot comes out to be negative semi definite okay this happens a lot huh? uh especially for uh, all the dynamic system specialists yeah because typically uh we are i mean i count myself more as a control nonlinear control guy okay? so for me uh, i put some effort into choosing v which is not necessarily the energy of the system okay so a large part of my work is actually choosing good functions to work with yeah um so we typically don't choose the energy of the system as the v we may start there but then we modify it okay but typical dynamical systems guys they are they want to analyze the system just with the energy okay uh, and when you do that in a lot of cases uh, this will happen that uh, you will have a positive definite and continuous uh, v which is obvious because it's the energy of the system or the hamiltonian or whatever i mean you can use the hamiltonian you use the energy all of these are energy like quantities uh, but v dot will invariably come out to be zero or negative semi definite you will never get a uh, negative definite v dot yeah this happens a lot and then but you know again like the pendulum case yeah you know i mean i modified the system of course i played with the system but you know very well that the pendulum the system itself is asymptotically stable just because you use the energy of the system and the v dot turned out to be zero does not mean that the system is not asymptotically stable it is you can see yeah so obviously we need some more uh mechanism to prove uh, asymptotic stability in such cases okay this was the first motivation the other motivation was uh anyway this is the first motivation the second one is there are systems limit cycle behavior one of the obvious systems is the van der waal oscillator we've already seen that in an assignment i hope yeah so you uh, the trajectories tend to converge to you know this closed bounded set yeah i mean another example is just this oscillator uh, here 
here the, it's a bit more dull than the Van der Poel oscillator because in the Van der Poel uh, oscillator, I don't remember it just whatever it has something like this. I'm making it very badly like this, I think. Yeah. So trajectory is actually converged to this. Do this. Uh, this is a bit more dull because wherever it starts, it just continues in that circle. It doesn't converge to it starts converged. Yeah. There is nothing to converge to, it just keeps circling like this. This is the standard linear oscillator x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is minus x1. Hmm? But then the Van der Paul oscillator, which is a little bit more non-linear oscillator, tends to do have behavior like this. And such systems are very, very important. I already told you, non-linear oscillators are very critical uh, and are used in a lot of uh, biorhythm applications. Okay. So, obviously, we want to study such systems. So, in, in for such systems also, we want to have a little bit more uh, general definition of convergence. Okay, we want to have a more general definition of convergence, not just something as uh, basic as going to a point. Huh? We may want something more. In fact, there are more modern problems in controls, like uh, you have the, uh, say you have the platooning problem. Do you know what is platooning? So, it is a very modern, uh, you know, uh, I would say transportation theory uh, idea in which uh, basic idea is there are a lot of these transportation trucks, yeah, that are carrying a lot of goods, logistics, uh, and it so turns out that if they continue to move in a straight line with uniform distance between each other, that is uh, optimal in the sense of fuel efficiency and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this is called a platooning problem. However, you start, you maintain uh, this straight line formation with uniform distance between these vehicles. Okay. Very Sounds very straightforward, uh, but of course, uh, here the point is there may be traffic on the street and whatever. I mean, you may have to change lanes. So, once you do a lane change maneuver, you have to redo the platooning and so on and so forth. Right? So, these platooning things are automated in some way. So, this is actually a formation, uh, uh, a specific <coughs> example of a formation control problem. Okay. Another formation could be you have a bunch of defense vehicles going to, you know, carrying whatever, supplies, arms, ammunition, whatever, yeah, and you want to guard them, yeah, and there is a lot of applications now where you have aerial drones which are circling around them, okay, and so if they are circling around, so you have a bunch of, you know, bunch of drones which are circling this, uh, you know, uh, arm, armor trucks, yeah, and uh, how do you do that? This is also then you are sort of trying to converge to a you know circular pattern in some sense, right? And this is also convergence to it because obviously you can't start in the circular pattern. And even if you started in the circular pattern and you exactly positioned them, you 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 let them off in this very nice circular pattern around them, but the vehicles, armored vehicles, are moving, right? And they are doing whatever they are doing, depending on road conditions, especially in India, right? And, and and in border areas, right? There may be no roads. Yeah? So they are doing whatever they are doing. So, but these guys have to keep, uh, you know, converging again to another formation, right? So every time the formation requirement changes, the center changes, and so on and so forth. So obviously they have to reconverge. So this is also a sort of limit cycle behavior you are looking at. If you want to study it in that sense, many people don't. Most people don't study it in that sense. They think of it as a coordination problem, but most coordination problems can lead you, formation problems can you lead you to limit cycle type behaviors. Okay. This, this is very important set of results actually, Lassarian variance. All right. Excellent. After this uh, mighty introduction, uh, we will look at the systems uh, that we are interested in. Uh, these results work for nonlinear autonomous systems only. The ones I am stating, yeah. There are extensions. It's a topic of uh, great research of uh, trying to do this uh, for uh, non-autonomous systems also, yeah. And there are results there, um, and you can look at it. But it's still an active topic topic of research. Yeah, it is not like it is, you know, it's not textbook material yet. Yeah, and most of what we do here is textbook material. Okay. So we start with um, as usual a nice uh, continuous uh, Lipschitz locally Lipschitz continuous vector field. Uh, with some initial conditions, we succinctly denote the solutions as x, x of t, right? We've been doing that, okay? Um, and we make some definitions, okay? Uh, so remember, we start with autonomous systems. Yeah, that's the main thing to remember. All right. First, we define what is an invariant set. 
what is an invariant set a set omega is said to be invariant if if you start in this set you remain in this set for all time okay that is what is an invariant set if you start in the set you remain in the set huh? okay great so i mean in this case it's pretty obvious i hope it's obvious that for system like this what is the invariant set it's a circle yeah of whatever radius you started with huh? if you started with a circle of radius square root of c remain in that circle of radius square root of c yeah obviously we are not discussing cases where there are disturbances and errors in sensing and all that stuff yeah this is the uh, precise case yeah this is the ideal case if you may hmm? okay great so omega is this okay it is a set of all points in the circle this is how you write yeah omega is exactly this yeah notice it is just the circle not inside the circle not the disk hmm? it is just the circle okay so this is what is a typical limit cycle yeah if you are inside a disk that is not a limit cycle that is just stability okay that is what we do if you are within if you are given an epsilon then you start within delta you remain within epsilon that is not nothing to do with limit cycle or anything it is you are in a disk yeah here you have a circle huh? that is a limit cycle behavior okay remember that okay uh, limit point what is a limit point uh, a point p uh, is said to be a limit point of this function x of t again whenever i write x of t it is the solution of this equation hmm? so a point is said to be a limit point of x of t if there exists a time sequence a sequence of time such that as tn goes to infinity such that tn goes to infinity as n goes to infinity and x of tn goes to this point p whatever point we are denoting as the limit point okay so basically there is a time sequence such that if you keep keep writing terms x t1 x t2 x t3 x t4 x t a k but the important thing is this t k has to go to infinity as k goes to infinity remember whenever i say sequence it's an infinite it's infinite size uh, not finite okay so as k goes to infinity t k has to go to infinity the basic idea is it is limit point i mean it, it, we want to look at behavior asymptotically therefore as k goes to infinity t k has to go to infinity and if in that case x t k converges to some point p then it is a limit point okay a very simple example i have constructed just to illustrate how uh, things are different if you look at this series or sequence sorry not series yeah it is half one half one half one and so on and so forth huh? so if i so if i take the time sequence uh, and i have denoted this as 0 1 2 t0 t1 t2 and so on if i take the time sequence t0 t2 t4 okay where what is the limit point correct if i take t1 t3 t5 t7 1 okay so remember any one function or a sequence can have multiple limit points not just one this and this is what constitutes a limit set okay this is what constitutes a limit set you can have multiple limit points and the set of all those limit points is the limit set okay just like half uh, the com the set containing half and one is the limit set in this case and if this limit set is a cycle okay and then the question is how do you define a cycle hmm? you can define it mathematically i don't want to get into the mathematical definition but think like a circle huh? it's somehow closed in some sense huh? closed compact those are the requirements so if the limit set is a cycle then it's a limit cycle then you have a limit cycle behavior again van der Paul oscillator okay that weird looking set is a limit set but it's a limit cycle because it has 
it's a cycle here yeah? it is it has a cyclical thing and there is a periodicity here basically it has periodicity okay great i hope those points are clear once those points are clear to us we can state the most general form of the lassalle's invariance principle so i, I are these uh, three definitions relatively clear to you yeah invariant set limit point limit set and limit cycle is just an extension of limit set okay okay great let omega subset of d subset of rn be compact that is closed and bounded in the case of reals compact and closed and bounded are equivalent hmm? and invariant uh, what is d in this case d is the domain just like your ball of radius r right d is that ball of radius r type of a thing this is the domain in which you are working hmm? so you want the existence of an omega which is compact and invariant inside this domain let v mapping d to r be a c1 function okay such that vx is greater than equal to 0 yeah look at the interesting things that are already happening we are, we are denoting it as v again scalar valued c1 function looks like a lyapunov function or candidate at least but it is not necessarily because you only require semi definiteness hmm? positive definiteness not required so it is not a lyapunov candidate okay does not have to be and further you want that v dot is negative semi definite in this compact invariant set omega okay then you define e as the set of points in omega such that v dot is exactly zero yeah it's evident that v dot is zero somewhere otherwise no need of saying v is only semi definite right so there are points other than the origin inside omega such that v dot is exactly zero okay and so e essentially captures those points where v dot is exactly zero yeah of course origin is also there but there are potentially points beyond the origin because v is semi definite v dot is uh, sorry uh, yeah v dot is semi definite and let m be the largest invariant set inside this e okay so lot of technical terms coming up now okay uh, we we will try to clarify this okay so we 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 have used many sets yeah so we define e as the set of points where v dot is zero we define m as the largest invariant set inside e then we can claim that if your initial conditions start in this omega then as t goes to infinity your solutions will lie in this largest invariant set m okay and m is obviously a positive limit set okay not necessarily a cycle yeah but it's a positive limit set so uh, the immediate obvious thing is the lassalle invariance principle does not require lyapunov candidates hmm? let's look at the obvious things then we look at the more non obvious things okay does not require lyapunov candidates because it is starting with v only greater than equal to 0 hmm? second thing it gives a uh, actually it seems to give a more general result than lyapunov theorems right because it talks about convergence to a positive limit set yeah it basically at the end of a lassalle invariance analysis you could potentially say that my solutions go to go to say if the limit set contains 10 points hmm? or 10 equilibria yeah then you can actually say that the solutions can go to any one of these 10 equilibria okay so that is stronger than not stronger but more general than saying it goes to this one point okay so it's a more so obviously if it's a limit cycle then lassalle invariance actually gives you a way of saying that you converge to this limit cycle hmm? there are hardly any other results which will uh, talk about how you go to limit cycle. i mean there is also the poincare theorem but there are very few results which tell you that you will actually converge to a limit cycle or a limit set because or converge to a set for that matter because until now we are only talking about converging to a point yeah we even we have not even said anything about uh convergence to a set okay in fact 
if you guys notice this notation is in itself not very uh, obvious. Uh, if m is a finite set of points, suppose m is a finite set of points, then this is okay. You are just saying that as n time goes to infinity, your uh, states go to one of these points. So, you can analyze any all the points. But if m is, suppose m is a continuous set, like a circle, then how do you even, I mean this is not a very simple notion to uh, understand, ok. When I, when I use this terminology, this terminology is difficult, huh? all you are, it is in a sense what you are saying, yeah, actually I would put it this way, if any of you knows this notation. Okay, this would be the more precise notation that we are used to following. What do you know? Sorry, do you understand this norm of x t subscript m? Huh? What is an m norm? You mean like l0, l1, l2, m norm? No, 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 it is not that. Although I have used similar subscript notation, I agree, but it is not that. This, this notation is, or maybe I know there is a overloaded operator here, <laughs> but, but, uh, but. <laughs> This notation is also used for uh, and if it is not a number and a symbol and a, or a letter, it is definitely used for uh, norm with respect to set or distance from a set, ok. This is a distance from a set. This is defined with a infimum, ok. This will be defined as inf over all x0 in m norm of x ok it is basically telling you shortest distance from the set yeah so this is actually uh, a set norm hmm? because we are until now we are used to measuring so the, all of this is nice and easy to do in rn so yeah we, we can do it uh, in, in more complicated topological spaces, uh, well, I will say it is their problem, when they, whoever is working with that, they have to figure out all this. So, this is actually a more special norm, it tells you distance not from a point like origin or something, it tells you distance from a set. So, so that is rather interesting.